2014 NASCAR Cup Series champion, 60-time winner, has made it official. 2023 will be his final season. Kevin Harvick, of course, has been driving in the NASCAR Cup Series since 2001. So this is going to be year number 23 in the Cup Series. And uh, yeah, it's it's officially the final one. There have been rumors over the offseason. There have been rumors since last fall when Gene Haas said three of the four cars weren't known for the long-term future. Uh, so, you know, there's been a little bit of rumors and speculation, but rumors really amped up after there was a picture from a preseason interview thing with Hunt Brothers Pizza, one of Harvick's sponsors. There was a little forever patch on his fire suit, like his number four ever, get it? Uh, but then yesterday, last night, uh, the, the Athletics started reporting that Harvick would be retiring and everyone else kind of started to figure out the same thing. And it was figured out that it was going to be made official today. And at 7 a.m. this morning, 7 a.m. Central, so... 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Kevin Harvick made a social media post about a minute and a half video uh, announcing his retirement. So, uh, yes, it is official. This will be Harvick's last year. Kevin Harvick has had quite the career. He's raced for two teams, RCR and Stuart Haas. And it was about the most crazy start you could have asked for in a career. Harvick was not supposed to race in 2001, at least not full time. But Dale Earnhardt tragically died at the 2001 Daytona 500, and they rebranded the car, they turned it into a white car, changed the number, and they put a young Kevin Harvick in that car. Harvick made his first career start at Rockingham the next week, and he eventually, just a few weeks later, as a rookie in his first ever, first few cup starts, got his first win in thrilling fashion in a photo finish over Jeff Gordon. That is one of the most replayed finishes I think we ever see. Every time we go to Atlanta, it seems like we see that. He goes on to win a couple more in Atlanta, and every time he wins at Atlanta, he holds up the number three in honor of Dale Earnhardt. As I said, Harvick with a very tough start to his career in terms of the circumstances, but he stepped up to the challenge, and he knocked it out of the park. Uh, he had a lot of success with RCR, multiple wins, uh, championship contending seasons, but can never quite get that championship done. He moves over to Stuart Haas Racing in 2014 and immediately wins his first ever cup championship. He hasn't won another one since, but he has won a ton of races, competed for a lot more championships, and if it wasn't for this championship format, I say that a lot on this channel, yes, he would probably be a four or five time champion. You look at some of his biggest years. You look at 2020 when he had nine wins and won the regular season title. But because he had a bad round of eight, he didn't even get a chance to compete for the championship at Phoenix. 2018, he had seven or eight wins. Uh, 2015, I believe he had a really good year. Even 2014 was a really good year. As a Jeff Gordon fan, I am obliged to say that Gordon was the best car and team that year and driver that year. But... That's a debate for another day. We're focusing on Kevin Harvick today. But Harvick, regardless of the systems, regardless of whatever, he has been one of the most successful drivers of all time. He's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's achieved almost everything you can ask for in the sport. He has won a Daytona 500. He has won a NASCAR Cup Series championship. He's won the Coca-Cola 600. He's won the Brickyard 400. He's won the Bristol Night Race. You name it, he has probably won it. There's probably only a couple of tracks he hasn't won at outside of the ones that have been added in the last two or three years. Uh, of course, last year, Harvick was at risk of missing the playoffs, but Harvick, in his well-known clutch form, picked up two wins near the end of the regular season to get him in. And then, uh, as I said with clutch wins, you look at that 2014 championship season. He had to win at Phoenix to go to the championship race. He had to win at Homestead to win the championship. He won them both. So Harvick, um, on the track... His records, his his style, I guess, his winning is well-known, well-documented. Uh, but then off the track as well, he has always spoke his mind. Uh, he's not afraid to give you his opinion, whether it's on another driver, whether it's on something that happened on track, or whether it's, as we saw last year, the safety of the cars. He, Him and Denny Hamlin were the two, I don't want to say loudest because for some reason that just seems negative, but they were the two most vocal in terms of the safety of the new car after uh, Kurt Busch got a concussion, Alex Bowman got a concussion, uh, Cody Ware had his foot injury. After those three crashes, 
Harvick and Hamlin, well, even before some of those crashes, Harvick and Hamlin were the most vocal in terms of, uh, you know, who's who's going to do something about this and when are we going to get it done. Uh, of course, changes are being made to the car. But, you know, Harvick's always been one of those guys who's been super vocal. And then, obviously, uh, we've seen his his incidents, I guess, uh, with with other drivers. He's gotten into it with Kyle Busch. Uh, remember 2014 with the Gordon Keselowski fight? Harvick went in behind Keselowski and shoved Keselowski into Gordon. So Harvick, even with Juan Pablo Montoya. So he's he has had some incidents, yes. And it's not like, you know, he just goes up and punches people for no reason. It's usually because of an on-track incident. Uh, but Harvick always wanted to speak his mind, always wanted to be himself. Uh, and, of course, you know, he's got a family as well. And that is one of the reasons he listed for his retirement, Harvick, I mean, he is, let's see here, he's almost 48 years old, or he's 47, 48 years old, so he is, he's getting up there in terms of a race car driver's age. He does have two young kids whose career, one of them is a racer whose career he wants to see and wants to help, uh, and then also, you know, a wife and a daughter as well that he wants to spend more time with, so um, he's figuring now's the time to retire, so we'll see. Um in terms of how his last season goes, uh, but let's look at some of the quotes from this article. Uh, one of the fun facts is he will be making his 800th career start at Talladega in April, uh, so that's pretty neat. He's 99 laps shy of leading 16,000 laps in his career. Only 11 drivers have done so in NASCAR Cup Series history, and that that's just some of the fun facts. Let's get to the quotes. There's absolutely nothing else in the world that I enjoy more than going to a racetrack, and I'm genuinely looking forward to this season. But as I've gone through the years, I knew there would come a day where I had to make a decision. When would it be time to step away from the car? I've sought out people and picked their brains. When I asked them when they knew it was the right time, they said it'll just happen, and you realize that's the right moment. You'll make a plan and decide when it's your last year. It's definitely been hard to understand when that right moment is because we've been so fortunate to run well. But sometimes there are just other things going on that become more important. And for me, that time has come. In the last year, I think I've seen Keelan race three times while he's been in Europe. I go to the go-kart track with Piper and she makes twice as many strides in a day while I'm there than she would in a day when I'm not there. It takes a lot of time to organize the level of racing they're doing. And to be around that is important to me. So, as I said, uh, Harvick right there listing his son and daughter um, in terms of wanting to be around them more, wanting to be around their racing career more specifically uh, as something, one of the reasons, I guess, that he is stepping away from NASCAR full-time Cup Series racing. And then Tony Stewart released a four-minute video on social media just kind of talking about his appreciation for Kevin Harvick, the championship all the wins, all that stuff. So, you know, obviously they those two have been a really good pairing in terms of a driver-owner combination. So, yeah, Harvick, uh, it's his last year. It is a, officially his last year in the Cup Series. Man, so many retirements in the, what, the last eight years. Gordon started it off. Uh, we've seen Gordon. Jimmy John. well, can we count Jimmy Johnson anymore? He's coming back. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Tony Stewart... Um, let's see here. I'm missing some. I know I am. Uh, Jamie McMurray. How could I forget Jamie McMurray? Casey Kane. Um, I'm trying to think of some big names, like really big names. But anyways, the, the number of retirements has gone up the last few years. So, uh, it'll be interesting to see who replaces him too, because Ryan Priest seemed like he was going to be the guy to replace Harvick, but then Almarola unretires, Cole Custer gets booted out of the 41, and now he's in the 41, Priest is in the 41, so I don't know who they'll sign. Uh, it's not like they have a reserve driver right now that they could sign immediately. It's not like, you know, there's a guy just sitting there waiting in the Xfinity series. Herbst hasn't lit the world on fire yet. Uh, if Cole Custer lights the world on fire in the Xfinity series, do you immediately pull him back up? Do you wait for someone else? Do you sign outside of the Ford camp like what what's the plan I guess is what I'm trying to say it'll be interesting to see who they sign but Kevin Harvick is last season what are the expectations we will talk about it more in the full season preview but 
I would expect him to get a win or two. Uh, you know, SHR has not been itself the past couple of years, but last year they took a big step up. Chase Briscoe got a win. Harvick had a couple of wins. It was a solid season compared to the ones before where, you know, you look at 2021. There was only one win in 2021 from SHR, and it was Eric Helmarola. So they've had their struggles the last few years, but last year was a better year. And we saw kind of old Kevin Harvick winning Kevin Harvick. So I expect to see more of that this year. I don't know how emotional he's going to be at Phoenix, but I expect him to get a win, maybe two. So we'll talk about that more. Uh, it'll be an interesting story to see what he can do in his final season. Such a storied career, as I said. 60 wins, a championship, just shy of 16,000 laps led, 430 top 10s, 245 top 5s, 31 polls, 790 starts. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how Kevin Harvick does in the upcoming season see what he can do but this is it for Kevin Harvick this is his last season so let me know your thoughts on Kevin Harvick his final season what do you think he will do and uh maybe just share some of your favorite Kevin Harvick moments was it that 2001 Atlanta win was it the championship in 2014 the Daytona 500 in 2007 let me know what your favorite Kevin Harvick moments were I'll read some of those really looking forward to that and I'll see you in the next video